Welcome to California Edition. My name is Brad Pomerantz and we are joined by Eric Linder. He is a member of the California State Assembly and we are sitting smack dab in the middle of your district. So thank you for having us. We're in Riverside today. You are about, you are now in your second term in mm -hmm. the Assembly. But what's interesting is you're part of that class that can serve six terms, right. not three terms. So the calculation is so much different than it mm -hmm. was in the past. Talk to us about that. Sure. You know, it, it, when, you're, when you're first starting out, it's, it's, uh, you get a feeling like you're drinking from a fire hose, right. you know. So if you can imagine, you know, there's, there's, there's all of these people you have to meet and, right. and process you, processes you have to learn. Um, but, you know, you, it doesn't take long before you realize that, um, that everybody that goes up there has kind of a pet project, something that, oh, that they can't okay. stop talking about. Okay. That's actually uh, great analysis. I've never thought of it that way. Yeah and, yeah, and that's why you get some some crazy ideas like right. uh, you know some people are going to be about the you know the, the plastic bag ban or banning right. foie gras or tackling Whatever football it is. Right. or yeah, yeah. and and uh, you know but but there are issues that 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 people will will put forward that they just can't stop advocating. But for. what's nice for you and your other classmates that entered the assembly in 2000. Uh, 12, I guess it is, is that you're able to take whatever that pet project mm -hmm. may be and live with it for 12 years. Sure. Assuming you stay in the body that is the assembly, whatever body you mm -hmm. were in. And so do you have a pet project, for example, or a pet issue? Is there an idea that drives you? Yes, uh, absolutely. Transportation. I mean, we, we're, we represent, I represent the Corona area, Corona, Norco, Eastvale, and Harupa Valley. Um, and, you know, we're world famous for our traffic and our congestion. It's, it's funny you say that. I just reminded you that uh, we are now taping right after the lunch hour. And we went to Corona for lunch. And mm -hmm. we went to the Costco in Corona. We got on the freeway. It was like 1.15. And there's traffic. Yeah. And I'm thinking, where am I? Los Angeles? But I, there is an issue. There's some congestion in, in your part of the county. Sure, and and you know you're you're not alone. I mean, I spent my entire career on the 91 freeway, right. um, and and of course you know I'd, I'd come back uh, come back from work and and go coach my daughter's softball right. practice, and you know every parent is uh, that's there is screaming about the congestion. I mean, it's, it's what is it? You know, I know that that part of Riverside County, kind of West Riverside County, had a great growth uh, mm -hmm. during the last decade. But it felt as if, you know, with the downturn, there are pluses and minuses, and, you know, the downturn maybe kind of slowed down that growth a bit. But yet, I don't feel as if the congestion has decreased. Uh, no, in fact, if anything, it's probably got worse. Um, and and I, I would attribute it to we haven't invested in our roads. Mm. Um, you know, we're, we're dealing with a deficit. It's a f very significant deficit. We're talking $300 billion over the next 10 years. And if you think about, right. you know, th this is real money. I mean, what does it look like? $300 billion, I believe, is, is almost beyond the, the imagination. So, what is it? so you Do you know, have a metaphor for us? Do you no, have, is it like stack it yeah, and it would get to San Francisco or it, something? Exactly. It's, it's like a question, like how, how far is the right. end of the universe? It, it goes beyond people's imagination. So I always try and, you know, figure out. Right. You know, what, what would it look like if it was stacked in front of you? Uh-huh. And do we know? Have you figured that out no, yet? No, I haven't. We're going to have to do it. Maybe we'll put it <laughs> on the screen or something like that. But more uh, in the same vein, uh, I recently spoke with someone, uh, the executive director of the League of California Cities. Sure. And they are truly apoplectic about this issue. Mm -hmm. And there's the question of just roads that are in disrepair, mm -hmm. let alone the need for additional roads, for exactly. example, in Western Riverside County. So what's your focus and what are your, what's the focus of your colleagues on the question of repair versus new construction? Well, that deficit is just for already scheduled maintenance and uh -huh. upgrades that are already projects in the books. So this doesn't include any new projects that might come up over the next couple of years. So that, that's, that's, uh, we kind of look at it the same. Um, you know, and, and one of the things that, that what I've done is I've introduced a bill to, to address that mm -hmm. uh, this year. I had three bills last year. Um, this year we're focusing on, on one because none of, them, none of them got very far. Okay. But this year, this year it's the topic of conversation. Everybody's talking about ways that, that you can address this. this uh, of course, it's, a, it's an important issue. And so what's the bill? What's your suggestion within your bill? Sure. AB4 is, is the bill. Mm -hmm. And a, what AB4 does is that it, it puts the money that truckers use, uh, that truckers pay okay. towards uh, their vehicle weight fees. I mean, you see on the freeway, you see these sure. scales, and they have to pay, right. the, pay these, uh, these weight fees for, for the trucks. Um, and, and a while back when, the, when, the, when we were having a problem balancing our budget, um, the governor swapped the, the money that was intended for transportation um, and put it uh, back into the, or put it into the general fund, sure. and, and in particular with, with vehicle weight fees, um, to pay down some of the debt. So if you can imagine, um, you know, the, the money that we're even getting from it, right. uh, one dollar isn't getting you a dollar's worth of loans. It's getting uh, of zero. Roads. <laughs> it, it's actually paying, paying, right. down, paying down debt. Right. 
So what do you think? I mean, the governor is known to be fairly fiscally conservative. Mm -hmm. uh, that being said, transportation is a significant issue. Have you spoken with your friends on the Democratic side? What do they think of the idea? Sure, and, and th that's why I'm excited is because this year they're, everybody's talking about addressing the issue. And we haven't, not everybody's come to, together right. to find out what, what the solution is. Um, you know, th we think this is a very reasonable solution because it doesn't put the uh, burden uh, of payment on, right. the, on the taxpayers or the motorists. It's a swap. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a swap. This, and, and in my opinion, this, you know, um, when the vehicle weight fees were, uh, Prop Proposition 42 happened a uh, mm -hmm. quite a few years back, and Proposition 42 promised the voters that these funds would go mm. towards vehicle weight fees. Or, I'm sorry, go towards roads. Sure. So in, in my opinion, it's a little bit of uh, uh, the, the, the people oh. of California are a little bit disenfranchised. But let me ask you, though, we've heard a lot about the gas tax yeah. and how if you look at the gas tax, it hasn't increased in 20 years as a result of a variety of political scenarios. We also know that because gasoline prices are dropping and because more of us are driving hybrids and exactly. electric vehicles, we're getting less money out of that gas tax. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, do you know, do we want to raise taxes? You know, it's it's a dicey topic, but there is that question. Mm -hmm. Is it time to look at the gas tax? You know, and it's a it's a great point. Um the the gas tax was uh was put in place in a time where um you know, cars were not fuel efficient. Right. And you could you could take uh you could go out in, the, in your parking lot out there right now and you could take your, your biggest truck mm -hmm. that, that would be considered by today's terms a, a gas guzzler right. and you could put it, you could, you could take a, um, you know, a, a, a fuel efficient vehicle from 20 years ago and I'd be willing to bet that that truck is getting better fuel economy than, then. than, than, uh, than right. you know, a fuel efficient right. vehicle was then. So yeah, it, it's it's absolutely the case that that this might be an antiquated mm -hmm. way of doing things, and and um, and there is a solution that. But that might would be your caucus look at the gas tax? Because as you know, uh, many members of your caucus are concerned that the gas tax is now implicated as a result of cap and trade, mm -hmm. uh, that gas prices purportedly are going up because gasoline is now part of the AB thirty two cap and trade element. So. Mm -hmm. Is that an issue that's a non-starter, or could the caucus come together with the Democrats and look at the gas tax question? You know, it, it's certainly it's certainly something that everybody needs to consider. Mm -hmm. um, and and there are some ideas out there that that you know some some we like, some some we don't. Right. Um, you know, one of the one of the uh, one of the alternatives that people are talking about is is some sort of uh, yes. uh, vehicle miles traveled right. device mm -hmm. that you'll right. put in your car that'll that'll track how many miles you go. And and you know, my personal opinion is I I. I I don't like the idea of the government being able to, to, to potentially know where you're at. And it's but also, I, I, I just think people will, will, will it, it'll be a hard one for people to take. I think people will freak out. And I also think about folks that live in your community, in Corona, Norco, they may mm -hmm. be traveling into Los Angeles for work or into Orange County for work. So by definition, they're just going to drive more. Mm -hmm. You know, look, housing's more affordable in Corona than it is in you know, the suburb of LA or Orange County. So should they be penalized? Because, I mean, that, yeah. as the argument goes. It, it's, a, it's a great point. Point. And, yeah. and you know we've we've fought real hard to make sure that if there is any test that there's representation because our, our travel time here right. is significantly longer than somebody that's in a more urban area or, or works closer to uh, or, or works closer but to home. But the flip side is is even though they've moved out for more affordable housing, they are using the roads more, mm -hmm. and so there's more wear and tear, mm -hmm. and so it, it cuts both ways. Sure. So where do we go from here? What do you think, sir? I mean, since transportation is your issue, what, what's the answer? Well, I, I would really like to see a solution that really doesn't put the burden on taxpayers, mm -hmm. some sort of uh, revenue neutral solution. And, and that's why I think AB4 is a good start. You know, we can, we can get to $3 billion with, with, uh, oh, really? AB, with, uh, with AB4. Um, you know, la last year, the bills that, that, I, uh, that right. I authored were, one of them was to use some of the surprise surplus funds right. and use that towards uh, transportation infrastructure. Well, look, revenue is better. We know that. I mean, more money's coming in than we expect. So one could hope that one of your bills or another one makes it through yeah. because our roads are, are deteriorating. And, and I, for sure. I believe, too, that, that I think the money's there. It's just not being allocated towards okay. transportation like it was intended. His name is Eric Linder. He is a member of the California State Assembly. My name is Brad Pomerantz. It's California Edition. Thank you.